If we have a data set, then what would be the purpose of doing variable selection? First of all, we want to improve the model. We want to remove irrelevant, unreliable or noisy variables. We want to get better prediction or improve the statistical properties of the model. It can also be helpful to do variable selection uh, in order to make the interpretation of the model easier. In some situa situations we might need to do variable selection because we cannot afford to measure all the original variables but we want to see which variables should we retain to still have a good model but a model that we can less, uh, measure uh, more cheaply. And that's useful for example when we want to make fast instruments or routine analysis maybe for use in an online or inline control of a product or a process. Let's have a look at an example. Here's a set of spectra measured on 60 samples, which are 60 beers, 60 different beers. And additionally, we have also measured what is called the real extract, which is a quality parameter uh, in the beer production. We can see uh, on the spectra that we have different areas. For example, we have the visible area here and there's a lot of variation in that area. We have an area here in the near-infrared region which does not seem to vary a lot uh, but which actually does contain a lot of relevant information. And then we also have an area where you can see that there's a lot of noise. And knowing a little bit about this type of data we might uh, anticipate that this area is too noisy to uh, contain any uh, relevant information. But we do not know that for sure. If we do a PLS model, do a cross-validation, then we get predictions as shown here. And you can see that we get excellent predictions. We have an average error of approximately 0.7 using a five component PLS model. Maybe this result is good enough for the purpose. We have to decide that based on the requirements that we know uh, for this particular uh, estimate. But maybe we could do even better with these data. Let's have a look at a situation where we do a PLS model but using only a very specific part of the whole spectrum, namely the one shown here. This, we can explain chemically, could be related to extract and therefore could be a relevant area to use. If we build a PLS model using this part only, well then the predictions uh, will look like this. And you don't get correlations much better than that. More importantly, you can see that the average error, the RMSE CV, the cross-validated error, is now only a fifth of what it was before. So we have really s improved our model significantly by choosing variables. And that's exactly what we would like to be able to do in general. And also in situations where we do not necessarily know uh, as much as we did here uh, about the data. In many situations, we cannot use our prior knowledge to choose exactly what variables will be important. And we would still be uh, like to be able to do um, a reasonable variable selection in those situations. One approach is simply to look at the model. There are many parts of the model that we can use for variable selection. For example, if you have loadings that have low values, well that indicates that these variables are not relevant uh, for the model. If we have variables that have low regression coefficients, that also indicates that these variables are not very important for the model. Such um, tools are not bulletproof. You could have situations where many variables having low regression coefficients altogether had a significant effect. But we can use it as ad hoc rules to test different parts uh, of our data. If we look at the regression coefficient of the uh, model we saw initially, the five component model, well then we can see that there are parts of the spectrum 
where we have very noisy regression coefficients, the rightmost part here. And that indicates that this area is probably not uh, helping the model very much with the predictions. So that could lead us to exclude those variables and try and build a model without them. If we look at the loadings, we basically get the same indication. The five different loadings from a PLS model of the full spectrum tells us that the rightmost part is very, very noisy. There are other approaches that we can use. And in the unscrambler, for example, we have something which has been called Martin's uncertainty test. And essentially, that is a jackknifing approach. And a jackknifing approach means that what we do is that while we perform a cross-validation, we are actually calculating a number of different models. So imagine that you have the 60 beer samples and you do leave one out cross-validation. Then during your cross-validation, you are calculating 60 different models using 60 different subsets of the samples. Afterwards, what you show in Unscrambler in the window is the final model calculated from all the samples. But in order to get there, you, you actually calculated 60 different models. That means that we have 60 different versions of, for example, the loadings, the regression coefficients. We have 60 versions of those plus the full model. And we can use that to calculate standard deviations of these parameters, for example, the regression coefficients. And that's exactly what we do in the jackknifing approach. We do a cross-validated PLS model without using uh, jackknifing or Martin's uncertainty test. From that, we determine the optimal number of components, including handling outliers, etc. Now we know what number of components to use, and then we do a cross-validated PLS model with the jackknife uncertainty estimates with the right number of components, not chosen by the unscrambler, but chosen by us. Then you can plot the regression coefficients for the optimal number of components, and you can click on the jackknifing icon and recalculate without the non-significant uh, variables. Then you investigate the new model that you get determine what the optimal number of components is, because that might have changed. And you can do that iteratively. So continue excluding variables until you don't see an improvement in the prediction error. A good rule of thumb is not to exclude too many variables at a time, even though jackknifing might suggest that. So just exclude a little bit and then redo the model. Here's an example of what it would look like in the unscrambler. We have plotted the regression coefficients of a PLS model from the plot menu, and we can see that we now have uncertainty uh, bars on each and every um, variable. So for some of these variables, for example, the fourth one, we can see that this uh, uncertainty band includes zero. So from this, we might deduce that the fourth uh, regression coefficient might actually be zero, and that could lead us to exclude that variable from the regression model. After excluding a number of variables, we will hopefully see an improvement in our prediction error. Some practical problems to consider when you want to do variable selections. There can be different situations uh, that will affect how you should perform your variable selection. In one situation, you might have a huge amount of data, and you know that only a small fraction of that data is relevant. And one way to see that is that when you build a model on the full data set, well, then it's difficult to make a meaningful model. So you, you cannot make a good model initially, and you want to remove variables to be able to get into a subset of the data where you can build meaningful models. That's a sort of an exploratory data mining situation, and it's a little bit difficult to deal with. 
there are specialized tools that can handle situations uh, like that for example genetic algorithms and also other uh, approaches another situation is where you have already a model that does work then we're talking about refining an already well behaving model that is much easier uh, to deal with approaches such as jackknifing or looking at uh, model parameters those are all based on the assumption that you have a well working model so don't expect jackknifing to give good results in the data mining situation but if you have a reasonable model to start out with then jackknifing can do really well another situation uh, is where you have continuous data there you know that if one variable is important well then per definition the neighbors are also important so you might want to remove your variables in uh, subsets so remove windows of variables rather than individual variables probably the most important aspect practical aspect about variable selection is that most variable selection tools are based on having an adequate model that does not depend on individual samples so therefore you have to remove outliers and you might even have to remove outlier more outliers than you can justify it's much easier to do variable selection if you have a very sound model where you have no individual samples that are a little extreme so you may want to do variable selection by excluding far more outliers than you will do in your final model you remove outliers do your variable selection and then you add the samples again and evaluate them properly